Hi. Hi. So how's the video going? Okay. Do the video. Okay. Thank you. So in this episode of Beta, let's look at how Apple hopes to continue using its technology to change computing. Uh, so I hope you guys like it and stay tuned for future videos where I'll be going into more detail over all the announcements that Apple made and what it means for its platform, its devices, and what it means for people who might be interested in upgrading their computers, tablets, and notebooks. So here we are catching up on the beginning of the Apple conference where Craig Federici is going over all the benefits of iOS 8. It's really important for Apple that its user base adopts iOS 8 because recent reports say iOS 8 has had the slowest adoption rate in recent memory. Maybe 50 to 60 percent of the user base has upgraded. This really puts Apple in a tough position because one of the benefits of iOS 8 for developers is the unified install base. When iOS 7 came out, the uptake among the install base was just massive and huge. But I noticed when iOS 8 updated, a lot of people had difficulty because they needed to make room on their phones. Apple, I think, really needs to address this issue in future releases, especially given that a lot of they're still producing 16 gigabyte devices. So when it comes time for those users to update, they're going to find it difficult to make room on their devices to download the entire OS. Now Craig Federici is going over the benefits of Yosemite. And a lot of this info is rehashed from WWDC, so if you guys want to check out that video, I'll put a link below. Now Apple is highlighting the benefits of using Safari, which I gotta say, I've recently transitioned. I'm usually using Chrome all the time, but I noticed while using Chrome, the battery life is shortened. So lately on my notebook, I've been using Safari exclusively and Chrome whenever I need to access certain bits and pieces of information that I have on Google services. The way Apple updates its platform really benefits its users. By making these software updates more universal, uh, reaching a broad spectrum of devices, Apple is really keeping their existing customers happy. People who have older devices can still benefit from a lot of the software updates, which is a strategy that I think more and more consumer companies and product companies are going to be adopting. The best way to keep your customers happy is to continuously show them that you're working to improve whatever product you're using. And software is really key in doing that. Hardware gives you the platform or the, the basic foundation, uh, whereas software allows companies to update them incrementally and add features, add uh, capabilities that previously were not enabled but with future software updates become more possible. I really see this strategy being used by Tesla, a company that produces cars but updates their products through over-the-air software updates. Doubling down on secrecy seems like a reference to the recent GTA bankruptcy, a company that manufactures Sapphire. It came out in the bankruptcy proceedings that Apple imposes a $50 million fine on companies that leak products out into the market. Normally these things would be under NDA or non-disclosure agreements, so the companies aren't allowed to speak about them. Because the company is in bankruptcy, all of these things have to be made public. Apple is right now in the process of trying to keep things under wraps. So the demos are where we get to peek at what Apple is really focused on as differentiating features for their platform. And the continuity features are a huge selling point for Apple because it allows them to highlight benefits of using multiple Apple products in creating a more seamless computing experiences as people move from mobile to tablet to desktop. It's really another way for Apple to lock in their user base because Apple really makes money by selling products and devices. They want people to purchase multiple products in order to benefit from all of these computing experiences. So now Craig Federici is giving a demo of the Apple Watch and how it can control presentations uh, that are streamed to the Apple TV. Apple's highlighting how they've sold 225 million iPads so far and now they're bringing up a chart that compares the iPad to PC units which kind of goes along with the thesis that Steve Jobs introduced uh, when the iPad was released, that the tablet is really uh, an extension of the PC, uh, where PCs were considered SUVs or large trucks, if you were to use the car analogy, and tablets were going to be the mass consumer devices that everyday people use to get to do the basic things on computing. But I think it's a mistake to uh, look at the iPad as either a mobile device or a replacement for the PC. I think it's doing something a bit different. 
Um, when I look at my nephews and nieces, I see that the iPad or tablets, whatever they're using, is actually replacing the television as well. So I think you have to consider tablets as a con part of a continuum of computing where people are getting used to interacting with screens at different sizes. The smaller the screen, the more personal the computing experience. And showing how it's even thinner than a pencil is a really simple but effective ad at really highlighting what Apple wants people to think of when they think of the iPad. This also speaks to the importance of secrecy because by controlling leaks, Apple is able to introduce the product in the way that they want people to perceive it. When product details are leaked, a company loses its ability to shape the public's perception. And Apple, as I've said in previous videos, their core competency is really around product design. Since they outsource a lot of the core technologies, chip manufacturing, memory chips, displays, batteries to other companies, they focus on integrating them into a unique package. So here he's showing 6.1 millimeters thin. So now Apple's going over all the benefits of the display, which I'll definitely break out in a future video. I want to make several videos from this October event that highlight the main features of all the products that Apple's putting out into the market, and maybe even doing some contrast videos where I compare it to other technologies and other tablets that are out there. And as expected, Apple is introducing new chipset hardware, the new A8X. They've tripled the amount of transistors. It looks like heavily weighted towards the GPU. Performance to me is always a big factor. I think part of it has to do with, uh, in my day job, I use an iPad 2 every day. As time goes on, the uh, limitations in the hardware become more and more apparent, especially as new software updates come out. The first software highlight is on gaming, uh, especially highlighting the Metal API that Apple's really pushing out to developers to get them to bring desktop caliber gaming to their mobile platform, to iOS. They've included a barometer in the iPad Air. And the iSight camera on the back seems to be similar to the camera that's included in the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Yeah, so Apple is really highlighting the photography and video capabilities of the iPad Air 2. A lot of the technologies in the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus are being integrated into the new iPad Air 2. And now officially Touch ID has been brought to the iPad Air line. And Apple's bringing Apple Pay to Touch ID on the iPad so that you can buy things online, but not in stores. So this tells me that there's no NFC in the iPad Air 2. And now Apple's highlighting two different software applications, one of them being uh, for photo editing. And now they're gonna highlight a software application called Replay, uh, an application that does video editing. Again, feeding into that thesis that Apple wants the iPad Air to take over many of the uh, heavy intensive tasks that desktops and notebooks are usually doing today. I think the problem with that thesis though is that still many people use their tablets as streaming devices. More and more I see people using them to mostly stream Netflix or stream YouTube. That's something where Apple hope is hoping to differentiate the iPad as a premium device that does more than just streaming. Uh, I really wish they would have started off at 32 gigs. Looks like with the iPad mini there's not a big performance jump. There's just some features like Touch ID added to it. Okay, so Apple's keeping the uh, previous generation in the lineup, so they're broadening the product line. So Apple just introduced the iMac with its new 5K display. And I was expecting a 4K display, but uh, seeing that they were able to pull off even more pixels than that makes it pretty impressive that Apple is still focused on investing in desktop computing. Based on the video that the company is now showing, it's clear that Apple is targeting this device towards creative professionals or people who spend a lot of time looking at the screen. I think that's always been one of the chief selling points of the iMac, it's display. I'm interested to see the CPU behind it, the GPU, how it's able to handle this many pixels because it'll definitely impact performance unless Apple's able to put the latest technologies in the device, in the computer. They've gone with AMD this time for the uh, graphics processing. I know previous computers were using NVIDIA. And Apple just announced the price of $24.99. The Mac Mini is getting an update. And so Apple went high with the new iMac, but also dropped the price of the Mac Mini. 
So it's an interesting strategy of trying to get customers in the door on a Mac with starting at $499. Uh, but if they want to go up the line, there's price points every step along the way. And then we see improvements to the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro lineup. So Tim Cook is wrapping up the event, going over the vision and strategy of Apple. So it seems that Apple is really extending its product line, starting with the iPad. Uh, there'll be a whole bunch of devices to choose from, starting at $250 with the uh, first generation iPad mini, moving up to the second gen and third gen. Uh, all the way up to the iPad Air, which still holds the starting price of $499, um, but at 16 gigabytes, given all the stuff that you can do on the device, it's probably going to be worth it to upgrade to the 64 gigabyte version, so I'll do a separate video for that. And then moving up the product chain to the MacBook, uh, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, announcing some incremental updates, really, to the performance of those devices. Uh, all the way up to the high-end iMac, which at $24.99 comes with a new 5K display. So Apple is continuing its tradition of updating existing product lines, but pushing higher and higher. Overall, it was really the iMac 5K display that will be the highlight of this event. Apple is trying to stay at the premium end of the market at every single screen size, whether it's a smartwatch that goes on your wrist, a smartphone that you carry around with you in your pocket, a tablet that you use at home or on the couch, a notebook that you would use in school, or even a desktop that you would use for work. Apple is really pushing the technology forward by trying to pack in as many of the most advanced features that they can get a hold of and integrating them for the customer. The uh, computing industry has definitely matured from its early days where the largest customer was the government that was trying to create missile defense systems, uh, get a man on the moon, and transitioned into corporations that were trying to integrate computers into their businesses. Uh, and that's where IBM, Microsoft, and Intel really took off. And now it seems that shift is focused on the consumer, where companies that focus on bringing computing technologies to millions and billions of people around the world uh, are the ones that are going to survive and push the technology forward. So thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope to come out with more videos, especially videos covering the Nexus 6, the Nexus 9, Android Lollipop. I know I owe you still a Network Wars video, which I, which I was researching yesterday. Um, it took a little longer than expected because I was basically digging into all the financials of Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile to try to come up with a good picture of what those companies are doing to uh, advance their cellular networks and what it means for people who are buying a smartphone in the next couple of months. So it's my hope and intention that for all of you subscribers, I will come out with videos in the future that cover all of the different nuances. And I want to share all of the uh, research that I do with you guys in future videos, so please subscribe. If I were to, in a word, describe what Apple did at this uh, October event, it would be incremental updates. Spreading out Touch ID to tablets, upgrading the iMac to take advantage of higher resolution displays, and highlighting how all of these devices integrate together through software and its platform. And as always, thank you guys for watching as we continue to look here on this channel how technology changes things. Are you almost done? No. Okay. Oh, Not a deal. You the iPad? No, but... Good job. Well, keep working. Keep working. Hurry, hurry, we need this video done today. Are you all done? No. It's for you. For you? No, wait then. Are you all done? No, good done. Tell me when you're done. No, okay. We gotta upload it today. No, okay. For YouTube. No, no. You see, they are seeing the camera, mirai ahí, and say bye. No, bye, ah. so what? Say bye. Bye. Say bye, YouTube. No, do. Thank you, Zinni. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Let's go, Reggie. Thank you for watching, Zinni. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.